There is someone today in a dark place that needs your light. Guide and take them to his place of hope and grace. Born into a rich musical legacy, singer-producer, multi-instrumentalist Chris Golden, son of the Oak Ridge Boys William Lee Golden, began his music career almost as soon as he could walk. Despite number one hits, Entertainer of the Year awards, playing for six living presidents and performing around the world, Chris understands who he serves, Jesus. After being approached one night by whom Chris calls an angel, he was told to quit playing for the ones who paid his check, but the one who gave him his gift. This is his story. This is today's Nashville. This is Faith. Chris, it's so good to see you again. It's great to see you again. Welcome to my home. It's amazing. <laughs> I love this room. There's just so much to see. Tell me about it. Well, this is my house of music it's not just this room it is it's just about every room you know I, when i first moved in here i had my cousin dana come up here and she was going to help me find my style and uh she said you know you don't really have a style <laughs> <laughs> said music is your thing you got all these instruments around you should put them all over the house so you know i made a drum chandelier i got a grand piano That's bookcase amazing. uh you know uh, guitars on the wall i tried to put this is the first guitar i ever had right here my uncle rayford got us that guitar and that's the one i learned to play on but i wanted them to be able to where i could get it off the wall and play it so i call this the house of music it's uh home h-o-m-e house of music and entertainment that is so wonderful and i notice all the awards behind uh, you yeah they're just dust collectors dust that's collectors <laughs> no you've had quite a few number one hits and i've and been blessed you I have, have. you've I been have. all over the world and take me back to where it all started because you come from a very talented family i do i come from a long line of it you and do. uh i guess i'm about a you know uh, it really started with my great grandfather Lee Rush Golden. He was a holiness preacher and he played the fiddle. And uh, he used to play at the Brush Arbors and stuff like that. And uh, he had his own radio show in Bruton, Alabama. And that's where my father got his start as a little boy playing and singing on Granddaddy Golden's radio show. My dad, you know, joined the Oak Ridge Boys when I was two years old. So we moved to Tennessee uh, in a cattle trailer. And brought the family up now, here. How, how I, I was, was about it? I was about two and a half or three yeah. when I when we moved to Tennessee. So I basically just went to school in Tennessee though and all the rest of my growing up years I spent on the farm in South Alabama. My mother and father were from the same small town in Bruton, Alabama. And my mama's family was very talented too. She was one of eight brothers and sisters. They all played and sang. They played different instruments. Her daddy played the fiddle as well. And uh, fiddle is something that I never really got the hang of. I can play a lot of different instruments, but I, I think it skipped a generation. My daughter's plays very well, and uh, she comes out and plays with the golden sun. But anyway, man, it was just something that always came easy for me, you and know, you're music. one of three sons, right? Uh, actually, I, there's there's four of us. I'm I'm, I'm my mama's baby. With yeah. my mom and dad had three, and I'm the baby of that. And dad had a another son. Uh, many years later, he's uh like, he waited forty years and thought uh, he, he was going to try. Yeah, we it love again. your dad too. Yeah, I do too. So you came to Nashville. You went to school here. I went to school at Good Pastor Christian School. Uh, they put us in school pretty early on, and. Uh, 
uh, and Christian school. I started there. I went there most of 12 years. There was a, a little bit of a period where I lived with my grandparents for a while, and I went to school down there. But when I came back, I went back to Good Pasture uh, Christian School. So we had Bible every day. You know, when you're in first grade, they the start you out with Jonah and the world and Daniel and the lion's den. And by the time your senior year comes around, we spent my whole senior year on Revelation, you know. So it got pretty heavy toward the end. And uh, I probably learned more about the Bible from my grandparents than I did in Christian school. Maybe it was because I wasn't paying enough attention at school. And, you know, you mind wander sometime, but... Uh, did you have a personal relationship with Jesus at that time, or was it I just... I did not. Okay. I did not. Because I think a lot of people look at that and say, you know, you've been brought up in Christian school, and, yeah. you know, but there's yeah. a big difference between that, isn't it? It is. It is. I learned all about it. I learned uh, everything about it, but I never had that personal relationship, and I guess I was probably about 14 years old, and uh, one of the summers that I was with my grandparents, they didn't have a television. All, all it was to do was play music and hang out in the kitchen or pull weeds, and we'd rather uh, play and sing. There was a little church down the road called Golden Memorial Holiness Church that we had a key to. It was built in honor of my great-grandfather. He had 13 children. My granddaddy was one of the identical triplets. It was Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And um, You know I'm a triplet. Are you? Yes, I am. That's one thing we had in common, I remember that. Okay. So I'm, they were identical. They were identical triplets, yes. Uh, did one pass away? or Two of them did. Oh, My granddaddy no. was the runt, and he was the only survivor. Really? So oh. he was a little bitty man, and... Uh, my grandmother was a poet and wrote a lot of Christian poems and stuff, and they took us to the revivals all the time. Sometimes it'd start out as a week long, it'd turn into two and three weeks, and we'd go just about every night. And I can remember uh, that's when I first went to the altar or felt that calling to go, as uh, when I was about 14 years old. But you know, I got out of high school and you'd think I forgot everything I ever learned uh, that I was taught because I joined up with a rock and roll band, started living that life that came with it and got good at being bad. And you know, it wasn't something that you think about, you, you made a getting off the skids too bad, but it was just that time and distance thing for me. From 14. Yeah. And did you know that you always were going to be in music? I did. It was something that always came easy for me. I never really had to try that hard to, so, you know, music just came really easy for me. I was able to pick up different instruments and, and uh, play them by ear. You know, it was something that I feel like was a gift, and it was my gift. And I felt like I'd be turning my back on my calling if I, I knew it was my calling pretty early on. And even during those times where it looked like I'd forgot about God, I always felt his hand on me, and I know that I that he never forgot me. I was taking the long way around to what, you know, sometimes a man has to take the long way around to come back to what means the most. And What was it like growing up with your dad always being on the road with the Oak Ridge Boys? I had a great mama. I had a great mother. She was the mother and the father uh, about three, 250 days out of the year. And you know, when, when dad was home, he was usually at the office every day. He managed the group. So whenever he was home, they were still, you know, booking dates and doing radio interviews or stuff like this. And, you know, he was, he worked a lot even when he was home, so. Your mom, we're gonna talk about her. She impacted your life tremendously. In a big time way, all of our lives, yeah. Yep. Every, gonna, everybody she ever met, she impacted. I, I heard about her. <laughs> We're going to talk about her when we come back. Okay. Chris, you were talking about, you were about 18, 19, joining the band. You were saved at 14, but you felt like you... I felt like I strayed there. You know, with the church I grew up in, backsliding was a bad deal. You know, that was worse than never being saved in the first place. And I felt like I, I was saved, but you know, in the holiness church, sometimes I never felt like I was saved enough. And uh, I don't know if that's uh, you've ever experienced that. You I know? think a lot of people feel that way. And when it comes down to a relationship versus, you know, the rules, 
yeah. you know, and it's the relationship with the Lord that sets us free. It is, but I always felt the Spirit with me, you know, I always felt that Holy Spirit on me, and it took me till I was even a little older to realize some of the things I was thinking about in my mind was actually that Holy Spirit whispering to me, you know. It took me a while to tune into that. You know, I was 17 years old, about uh, a month out of high school, you know, found myself in Los Angeles, California, playing in places I wasn't even old enough to be in, you know. How long were you out there? For about 10 years, probably. Well, out, out in L.A.? Mm -hmm. I was just, that was just a one trip. I oh, mean, okay. we, we were always on tour. I've never not been on tour since I was, you know, 15 years old. I, when I was 15, I, mean, I played about with a... You for 10 years. Is yeah, I was talking about, okay. about straying for about 10 years. When okay. you said out there, I was thinking that was about 10 year period of my life. What was going on then? Uh, you know, nothing that I'm proud of. Temptations and things that happened uh, as far as uh, women and different substances when, or whatever, you when, know. When did God get a hold of you and say, okay, Chris, it's... Stop. I always, I always, and maybe it was the thing that I, part of the deal of me going to the Lord when I was younger, it's like I always, almost felt guilty ever, you know, a lot of the time. I'd always had that, kind of that shame, you know, of, of uh, things that sometimes going on, but... Uh, I got tired of that. I, I remember everybody has to have their pigsty moment, right? When you say, man, I'm not living like this anymore. I, I'm going I'm going back to what means the most to me. So I had that, that same kind of moment. And a lot of it was finding out I was going to be a father. And I thought, man, I wanted to be the kind of example that my grandparents were to me for my children and my grandchildren. And I... I knew that I had to, when I became a man, I put away childish things, you know. Uh, I remembered that verse all my life. Uh, I had to learn a lot of verses, and that was one of them. So it was time to put away childish things, and I sort of rededicated my life to it. I had an experience that I feel like was a heaven sent, uh, what I feel like was an, a real angel that come and basically wow. told me, you know, you need to quit playing for the people that are coming to see you and writing your check and play for the one that gave you the gift. So that Who was sort that? of what? it was out in Cerritos, California. And uh it was it was something I I was scared when it happened. I've got the, you know, trembles all over it. It, it scared me because I was in such a dark place at that time. Um feeling unfulfilled and uh, doubting my calling. I wanted to sing. I'd, I'd been a singer before I became a drummer. You know, actually, I started drumming when I was a kid, but it was something that I, I never lost my desire to sing. I felt like I was just doing that to feed my family and kind of hard to jump off a moving train. I was working with the Oak Ridge Boys in uh, Alabama and Restless Heart, and, and uh, we were on the road all the time. So it's kind of hard to jump off of that. But, uh, Anyway, I started making gospel music. I went home and sort of uh, changed my trajectory and started singing gospel gospel music and making gospel records. And I've been blessed ever since, you know. So was it an actual person that came and said, "Hey, stop"? Yeah, it was. A, it was a man. It was a man. Yeah, but I don't know his name. I don't know him. I don't know who he was. I looked for him after the show and never saw him again. <laughs> what did you uh, think about it? Uh, it? It impacted my life so much uh, at the time that I called my family. I called my dad. I called my brothers. I called my mom. I called my Aunt Lynette and said, I think I just saw an angel. And I believe in angels, you know. I believe in in my heart. I, I, I even told him. I asked him twice if he was an angel. I said, are you an angel? He said, I'm just a messenger. I said, well, that's what angels are. That's what angels and are. I said, I don't know. I may not know till I get to heaven if you were, but I do know who sent you. And uh, it was the timing was perfect. I love so what you. So I said. sort of rededicated my life at that time, and I've been. I hadn't looked back. I love that you state that you pray, uh, you play for Jesus now. For Where, the one that gave me the gift. The yeah. one that gave you the gift. Yeah. Tell me about some of your songs. I love the one, your son. 
That's fairly new, isn't it? It's a powerful song. It's on my latest album, and uh, it's a song written by Jennifer Lane and Mark Narmore, and it was written from the perspective of uh, someone had told them not to bring their son back to church. He had come out as being gay, and they told him not to come back to church. Well, what better place to have somebody come to, right. to, to come? And that was her thing was, mm -hmm. well, what if that were your son? Are you going to cast him out or are you going to love him through it till he finds his way? You know, let's show the love of Jesus. And uh, it's one of the most, it's the most powerful one that I do in concert and the one that a lot of people, it, uh, they want to take it home with them, you know, or it, it impacts a lot of people. I but it's it not just impact. about that that circumstance it could also be you know they may wear the hair different they're they're uh they may be tatted up and people judge people judge people judge <clears throat> and i had a lady come up to me at a church in englewood florida and say you got off the long hair to be singing gospel music i said ma'am i don't know if you know this but i'm the cleanest cut guy in my whole family <laughs> what'd you right? say <clears throat> she she didn't know. Did but, she really uh, want you and to I, you know, that? I've seen a lot of pictures of Jesus, you know, and uh, no. But God has really changed your life, and we're going to talk about some of your other songs coming out, what He's doing, and yeah. and talk a little bit about your mom and and her final days and yeah. how she was able to spend them here with you. She was. So we're going to talk. She was about, right here. Yeah, we're going to talk about it in a minute. Okay. Chris, I love the fact that all your music is about Jesus. And that is your main goal now, is to share His message, isn't it? It is. I'm still playing and singing for the one that gave me the gift. You know, every project that I've done for the last 10 years has been, has been that. Every song that I've recorded as a solo artist. Now, I am doing some things with my family that is more secular. Uh, things with my dad and my brother and my daughter and my kids, but you know the first records that we record that we recorded as a family were all gospel songs, and then it it just kind of evolved into other things that we all love to play and sing, like "You Are My Sunshine" and you know the American Songbook, basically, and it's all family friendly and. It is a little on the secular side for what I've done the past 10 years, but as a solo artist, I, uh, I play and sing in a lot of churches every week. I travel around the country and I share my story and uh, try to encourage people and lift them up a little bit and let them leave a little lighter than they walked in and, and try to give them a good dose of hope and light, the light, you know. Will you sing uh, one for me? I will, I will. What do you want to hear? <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, let, thank you, Lord, for this day. Yeah, the, the, this one. This is my what I know what I wake up singing every day. Lord, help me when I'm falling and running out of faith. Stop me when I'm doubting that things will be okay. Show me the way to find my way. Thank you, Lord, for this day. And help me when the world gives me more than I can take. When I make myself half crazy trying to do it my own way. Give me the words I need to pray. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Catch me when I stumble and blindly lose my way. Help me find the answers to this mess I made. Keep sending those angels to keep me safe. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Every moment, every simple thread of grace. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Lord, remind me to remember that life is not a race. 
and teach me to surrender and live each day with grace. Show me how to walk on feet of clay. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Catch me when I stumble and blindly lose my way. Help me find the answers to this mess I made. Keep sending your angels to keep me safe. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Every moment, every simple thread of grace. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Every moment, every little thread of grace. Thank you, Lord, for this day. I love it. I love your music, Chris. Thank you every single much. one, every time I hear your voice in your songs, it's just... Well, Such thank, a blessing. thank you, Terry. Next time, maybe it'll be a little later in the day, and I'll be warmed up for you. <laughs> it's wonderful. <laughs> uh, so, did you write this song? I did not. A good friend of mine wrote that, and uh, my brother Rusty recorded it first. He on a solo album he did called Sober, and uh, I always loved it. And he wasn't doing it live, and he said, "You know, I got two or three of these songs. I think it'd be good for you." And it was a guy that I had known his brother, the only two piano lessons I ever had were from a guy named Costo Davis. His brother Steve wrote that, but he wrote a big hit called Take Time to Know We're Back in the 60s, and when he was just a kid, he was like 16, 17 years old. But he had a reawakening of his spiritual life, and he, uh, he, he wrote some gospel songs, and I recorded a couple of them, and he passed away just this past year, but Whenever he uh, he saw me do that on the Huckabee show, and he he told me he said I've never liked anybody singing any of my other songs. He said, but it sounds like you wrote it. It so, does, uh, it does. And yeah. you know, I love too that you you come from a family of musicians mm -hmm. and singers, and you have a solo career. You're also in, in a band with them. I am the Goldens. Yes, and and uh, and uh, doing an album on my daughter right now. It's somewhere between bluegrass and Broadway, if you can imagine that. But uh, she's a great singer and plays fiddle. And I'm doing another album with her right now. And also my son Elijah. Is a, he's up at Brown University, but he's writing songs. We're going to be recording some before he goes back this year. My middle child is also super talented. She's a great singer and usually steals the show. So that's a whole nother generation, you know, so that's five, their fifth generation uh, players and singers. Well, we only have a few minutes left. Okay. I want to talk about your mom okay. and uh, how you spent the last few months with her. Yeah, it was during the pandemic. We found out uh, early on during the pandemic that she had pancreatic cancer. It was inoperable. We brought her to Tennessee for second opinion. She had been sick, and uh, we found out that was going on. And, and for where her treatments were, it was a long way from her house. She lives and still lived in that same small town in Bruton, Alabama. Her brothers and sisters, you know, everybody was sequestered at home. So I said, why don't you come stay with me, and I'll take you to your treatments and stuff like that. And so she came here to live with me for the last... Uh, Ten and a half months, and so it was. It was the for the first time since I was fifteen years old. I didn't have one date in the book, and we would set up in this living room every week, and I was doing those Facebook lives and playing for people. You know, it's like me, when they said music is non-essential. It's like then church is non-essential. Both of those hit me hard because I play music in churches, so it was a double whammy for me. But if they know anything about our family, it's like air and water. We got to have music, so. We sat up here in the living room, and I played and sang. I did a Facebook Live every weekend for what you think? for a year, and she was my audience. And she would clap, and she would request songs, and uh, what a they would do that. It is and for her. we got to be with her. And my brother had came from overseas, and he was able to be with her too. We were all 
just uh, kind of hung out here in this living room a lot, and I wouldn't take anything for the, that last time we got to spend together. And she was a big part of my spiritual journey too, because I know she always prayed for me and prayed, uh, you know. She was loved by a lot of people. Wasn't she was. She? she was indeed. Chris, thank you so much. What a honor and blessing to sit down with you again. And, Terry, I appreciate you taking the time. And that we, I, I just love your family and everything that you guys are doing and the people that you're reaching. Well, I hopefully we're shining the light. To you somebody. are shining the light, trust me. That's you what are. we're going to keep trying to do. Chris, yeah. thank you. As long as I have breath, as I'll long keep as we for have it. breath. And trying to make a difference, you know, because it's not just for doing it for other people. The closest I ever feel to God is when I'm playing music. And, uh, and singing songs to him and about him. That's when I feel closest, and that makes me want to sing all day long. <laughs> Chris, thank you. Thank you, Terry. My friend, my prayer for you today is to give the Lord the thanks for all your blessings. This is Today's Nashville. This is Faith. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.